Hey, what's going on everybody? So today's video, got the owner of VanCraft, uh, good stuff. We are going to not only see one van, we're gonna see two vans. We're actually gonna get the price, which I never ever talk about with professional builders. So we break down everything inside of them, and that's why I have this lovely gentleman here. So let's get into it right now. What's going on, man? Hey, okay, so we've got two vans. Okay, we want to say who you are again? Oh yeah. Because, you know. This is a new video. No, this is a new video. All right, so I'm Nate. Hi, <laughs> Nate. You're at VanCraft Camper Vans in Salt Lake City. We're gonna show you two examples of what van we offer. We just build Sprinter vans, either 170 or 144. No extended, no dually, no low roof. Can I ask why? Uh, I don't have a great answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, dude? I really love the honesty, uh, we though. We stick to what we're good at, and we're just good at those two things, and, you know, we've been doing it for a long time, so. How long have you been business for? Built my first van in, like, 2013. Went from building them in my backyard to building them here. When did VanCraft LLC become a thing? 2014 and a half, maybe. Can we step inside and you yeah, check them out? let's take a look. So this is our long wheelbase offering. You offer the, the 170 and 144. Respectively, we call those short wheelbase and long wheelbase. Okay. Very original names. We have one layout that goes in the 170 chassis. This is it. Okay. Um, this is a pretty base option van. So this has all of our like base stuff that we offer standard, plus a couple of small upgrades, but nothing major. In the future, yeah. are you going to offer a different floor plan? Because yeah. I know VanCraft for many years. I've seen your layout. I love your layout. Yeah. But I'm wondering if you're going to offer a B and C floor plan eventually. Yeah, totally. So one thing about us that you should know is that we manufacture a lot of these vans. And we have a small team. We have a very small in-house design department. It's really tough for us to just, you know, a customer calls and says, hey, I want a bathroom. Can you do that? If I was a custom builder, yeah, it would build you a bathroom, right? But I can't be sure that you're going to call me in six months and I'll know exactly where the positive wire is that goes to the water heater, right? Mm. But I want to know that for every single van that we build. I want to build a system that works, is re repeatable, and then I can build a... I have a binder instruction manual that goes with every van and I can tell exactly where everything is in the van. All those things take time to develop. Um, so these two layouts we've had for years and so we've developed systems around those and that sort of thing. We'll have new layouts coming out this year. If you've been after a VanCraft van with a bathroom, uh, maybe look at us in the spring. So just quick walkthrough, you wanna go front to back? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it quick. I'd like to have some details. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to ask you some nitty gritty stuff. All don't right. worry. Interrupt me whenever you want. You got a swivel seat here in the front. Yeah. Uh, only single swivel. You don't have the dual swivel. Yeah, and you'll see there's a difference. This van has one swivel. The oh. van that we'll see in a second has dual. This one is an aftermarket swivel. The one you're going to see in a second is from Mercedes. The big thing is, is in our layout, the driver's side swivel, it doesn't work extremely well. Like this cabinet's here. So you can swivel kind of 45. Mm -hmm. And it works a little bit, but it's not perfect. So base we just installed the one because most people don't use the driver's set anyway i actually love the length of this galley i yeah. don't think you have that option in your 144 but we don't we have really good cooking space in the 144 for what it is um i do a lot of cooking on the road i don't like to eat out while i'm traveling so um you know kitchen space is important well now that you brought this up now I, i'm going to ask you a nitty-gritty question yeah when you go camping in one of your vans which one do you take long wheelbase you take the long I wheelbase. I take this van every time. You take it, and you are married with a newborn, so congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I have a wife, and I have an eight-month-old daughter, and I have a dog. And even if it were just me and my wife, like back in the day before we were married, we'd take a van and go out. I'd always take the long van. And the reason stems from a story I told you briefly about okay. being stuck in a van in a snowstorm <laughs> with my brother, actually. Yeah. Um, and I got food poisoning. If I have the option between the two, the living space in here when it's cold and inclement weather is way nicer than the short wheelbase van. Looks like you got your induction. What yep. else you got going True on? True induction. Below here is just really deep storage space. These are all big full-size drawers. We use Bloom hardware for our, all of our drawer slides. Ooh, pretty uh, hardware. Yeah, we use good stuff, you know, and then when you buy a van from us, it's gonna come with all your manuals in here. It all comes in as a digital copy, but anything that's handy to put in here, that's paper, you can still in this drawer. Um, all the drawers have these latches like we talked about earlier too. These are those little finger pulls. Well, it was a different video, but we'll let that go. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, behind this, against the wall, is the audio system. So that's going to be your uh, amplifier and uh, LCQ set up to harvest audio profile off the front speakers and yada yada. But that gets all the audio stuff is behind these drawers and is accessible when the drawers are pulled out. So. Well, see, this is a party rig. Oh yeah, you get a bump when you're in a camper van. <laughs> You yeah, know, I'm about to stand in here. I usually sit down in that seat, but I'm standing in the section because you didn't put a... We don't do the overhead storage in our vans. You can option it if you want. It's very rare that we get people that follow through with it because, um, you know, part of the design of this is a very open 
floor plan. Yeah, getting in and out of that driver's seat and passenger seat, like, and I'm six foot tall, so I hit my head on stuff a lot in vans. Yeah. And so, you know, that storage space is nice to have, but Mercedes puts these nice shelves up there, and you can store quite a bit of stuff up there already. Sink, standard sink. Yeah, deep uh, stainless steel sink. We have this butcher block countertop in this van. Um, your refrigerator is under here. This Which, is a bit of a like signature move that we do. The under under mount refrigerator top load. We hog out the material in the countertop. Yep. Then we actually reinforce this with iron inside of this so that it doesn't bend. You're giving away secrets, dude. No, those are not, I mean, try it at home. It's not, you know. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> so then we fill that with spray foam, put the lid in. Okay. Match it to the fridge. This is all sailboat stuff. This is nothing new. It's just true. Yeah. What is that, a winter? This is a winter brand. Yeah. yeah. The top load, look at this. You pull this out. Oh. The groceries are out here. Put my groceries in. Load the fridge. And I have access to all that stuff all the time. Like I'm not having to like kneel down and fiddle through my little bit of fridge space to figure out where my eggs are. Like it's just there. I think Nate just made that look way too easy, but I it's agree. that easy, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the thing is, people say like, well, what, if, what if I'm cooking and and I have to get in the fridge and there's stuff on the counter? But it's as easy as like figuring out what you're gonna cook before you cook, and then you take the stuff out. True story. You know. Or use the other counter that you have over yeah, here. Yeah, there's all kinds of counter space in here. There is, I mean, yeah. or the table that's even behind you. Yeah. So this is a seating area. You know, we use the lagoon table as everybody does. You know, this is the best table fixture on the market. These cushions are an <laughs> uh, upgrade option in this van. So I talked about this being pretty base, but the leather is an upgrade. So I said at the top of the video, we're going to talk about pricing. Yeah. And you actually just touched upon how this is pretty basic. Yeah. Uh, what is, what are we stepping in? Or in, what we're in right now, what is the, what is the price of this? Yeah. So this is a Mercedes Benz 170 chassis, two wheel drive in white. Yep. With pretty Spartan options for Mercedes. And then our build in here is our like medium, I would say medium road build. And so this is out the door is going to be about 125. The reason you gave all those van specs, because that's van included 125. That's right. Yeah. And that makes up a lot of the price. And so Mercedes, you can buy a Sprinter from Mercedes for $55,000. You can buy one for close to $100,000 these days, just the chassis. People ask how much this van costs. Well, really it starts with how much does the van cost first, right? Yeah. Um, of course we provide the van and all that in this situation. We sell it as a VanCraft camper van, yeah. VanCraft camper, That's what right. the title says, yeah. Or RVIA, RVAI, am I saying that right? RVIA. RVIA, man, yeah. I'm so a dyslexic human being. Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> That, that's just who regulates how we're doing what we're doing. You know, they're making sure that we're installing safe systems and that our, our vehicles are gonna last a long time on the road. They don't have any safety issues. And that way, when the lender goes to, to lend you money for this vehicle, they know that it's a safe vehicle that's gonna last. And if you don't make your payments, they can collect it and get their money back basically. Because of that certification, yeah. you are allowed to go and get a 20 year loan from that. Yeah. 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 Is... That's one of the qualifiers. We are big proponents of using real material. We use real wood in all of our parts and pieces. None of this is particle board or plastic. So actually where every joint is made in the van that touches a joint that's not glued, there's actually felt in here. So in all these joints up here, this is all lined and edge banded with felt. So felt. Uh. Felt. Yeah. Felt tape. Inter industry secret if you're doing this at home. So that way, if this is chafing while you're going down the road, yeah, it's not uh, wood on wood squeak. It's felt. It's felt. Yeah. Feltastic. Feltastic. What wood did you use on the walls? This is maple and it's got a real wood core. There's no MDF Ma core in this. Yeah. Maple ain't cheap, man. Well, it's not expensive either. I mean, it's a good, it's a good, nice, it's, it comes finished like this. It's, you know? it's a beautiful, it is a nice, beautiful yeah. piece of wood though. I love obviously the grain of maple. You can get a, a hot washcloth and wash this down in two seconds. You know, it's not that terrible. I would ever paint maple. However, if somebody wanted a painted wall yeah would you do that we do laminate oh you do laminate yeah you can laminate the panels and why do you do laminate because it lasts forever man it's like it's... robust <laughs> see this is the thing is we rent these things right put over two million miles on our rental fleet we have people that fly in like you did and they take their luggage and they throw it in the van right so if you have that hard case luggage and it smashes against my rental van cabinet it doesn't make any marks or scratches or anything i mean the, the, wilson arts high traffic laminate is uh this is countertop grade stuff it's super thick so that's what all of the fronts of all this is is just a high pressure laminate yeah and we you know we use Baltic birch, a nice, like high quality plywood. And we like to show that off. We leave the edges exposed. What is this contract? Like, is this, this a box? reason? Yeah. Is there a reason? Yeah. So box? this is, you know, internally we call this the bench end cabinet. There's some storage under here. So secret storage. all of the, most of the electrical control systems and things run through this box as well. So this is a bit of a, like, if you're sitting here working remote, you know, you got your laptop here, there's a power outlet there. There's a bunch of USB plugs. You can keep your laptop and your mouse and things in here. It's super handy. My wife uses it as a vanity. We have a, 
a mirror here and she keeps whatever she needs in here. Underneath is obviously just open storage space. It's a cabinet, you know, there's, there's plenty of storage in there. Beautiful. We are in the 170, so you get a little bit of extra room back here. Yeah. What e extras, and we're gonna go to the 144 in a minute. Yeah. Sorry, short wheelbase. Yeah. Uh, we'll go that in a minute, but what are the extras that are come with uh, this? Along the, so from here? The longer wheelbase. From base. here back. Yes. It's the same in both the long and short wheelbase van that we build, right? Okay. From here forward, you're gonna get this floor to ceiling pantry, which is like our big trick uh, storage there. unit. So this is all half inch Baltic birch, nice handmade cabinet here in house. Uh, it's just a big drawer basically. And it has the same latch feature. Um, this holds, you know, cans of soup, whatever long-term food storage. I keep like my shoes in the bottom, that sure. type of thing. And then you get an extra overhead cabinet. So instead of getting two in the short van, you get three in the long van, just more storage. Okay. You get a bigger sink. You get bigger storage for extra water under the sink. And then you get more seating. Okay, and I believe your sink in the 144 is on this side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, smaller and it's on the other side in okay. the doorway. Yeah. What I also really love about your beds, what do they do? Oh, yeah, we have this is our other, we have the flip up fridge lid, and then we have the bed extension, which is, so the, the bed, when we make these beds up for like, you know, a fancy YouTuber is going to come into town and, fancy, and, eh? uh, and do a, a video, we, we make the bed up nice, you know, to make it look good and presentable. <laughs> yeah. But the pillows are over here. And what everybody asks for us is like, how wide is that bed? And we don't do flare space flares or any other brand flare. We don't do flares. Th this is the solution for that. So this just folds up and this gives Pretty you nice. all the sleeping space that you need in terms of length, well over six feet. The width is akin to a queen. Yep. And the, the length is like longer than any mattress. It's quite long. You did that really easily. You lifted that portion up really easily. Yeah, I want to say it's because I have good practice, but honestly, it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. <laughs> it's really not. It's not they just, you know, this is not like a, a bed that takes a lot of setup or breakdown. And that's yeah. important because when you want to go to bed, you want to go to bed. And when you want to sit, you want to sit. You don't want to be doing all this setup and breakdown. Yeah. But also, like, if you have to set your bed up and it takes a long time, you're just going to leave it set up as a bed. I also noticed something. Yeah. When you lift that up just now, you got seatbelts under there. Yeah, we got two seatbelts there and two seatbelts here. So two, two, and two in the front. I'm counting six. Yeah, it's six people can seat here in the van. Yep. Can yeah. you sleep six? Depends on how well you know each other. <laughs> uh, this turns into a bed. There's an extension for this. You see this hardware here? Oh, okay. So this turns into a second sleeping area. This whole, where I'm standing, this is all a big bed. Where do you keep all that stuff? Well, that's under the bed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's some storage under there for it. This is another two person bed. So two adults, two adults, it's four. Yeah. There's two more people left, right? Yes, there are, and um, so according to my math. I, you're gonna have to, I don't know what to tell them. You know? <laughs> no, we, so we have Tapui tents in stock. So we, we put a tent on the roof and that sleeps four more people in theory. But you know how tent ratings are, you know, four person tent really equates to three big adults. So technically if you were in a rental, you could rent one with a, with a Tapui rack on top. Yeah. Or a Tapui tent. Yeah. Or if you were to buy, you could also have that as an upgrade. Yeah, we have it all the time in our rental fleet. People come from like Europe with all their friends and they rent a van and go tour the US and then six people in a van, they split the cost. Another feature, again, that I truly love before we go over to your other one is you can access the underneath bed, yeah. not from a standard way that way, which is right here. Like personally, my use for this is that I keep a, a dirty laundry hamper in here oh nice and so i can just throw all my dirties out of the way get the smell under the bed out of the living space yep. also wet stuff like wetsuits or your, your wet ski suits, clothes yeah. or whatever most of your water and electric yeah is predominantly in the back yeah this is all storage this too. is all storage yeah so we we try really hard to like spread the uh, <laughs> systems out so that they're hidden and out of the way so the the batteries are under the refrigerator this is all battery okay refrigerator you've got a bunch of storage under here. A trash can fits nicely under there. Yep. You've got separate water storage for your sink so you can keep drinking water in here. This is refillable by just pulling it out. Is there this, gray water? This is all storage. No, we just dumped to the ground. So no okay. gray water. And then this is all storage. So just easy access. This is all Look wide open all storage, that. right? And then- I just want to point this out just real quick though. Yeah. You even cut this properly because you put, you have enough for this right here to yeah. pull up. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, all... it's a very simple thing, Yeah, but I like it. We try not to like do the fly by night thing. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've done these before. We've built a couple of these before, yeah. <laughs> I will say maybe the first couple, uh, that piece in the back wasn't exactly that measurement maybe. You, you maybe not have done that right. Yeah, but uh, we have this time. It's a lot of storage under there actually. Yep, and then there's amazing. there's more under here of course, and there's a drawer full of storage there. This is the perfect place to keep your Thetford toilet. This is the perfect place for you to keep all your extra bedding. 
Back in this corner is a great place for you to keep all your dog toys and stuff you don't use a lot, maybe. Yeah. Whatever things you don't use every day. A lot of people always ask about that, and you just answered one of them, is yeah. toilet. Where do I use my toilet? Yeah, well, in every layout toilet. van that we build, we include a place for you to stow your toilet, you know? Personally, I have one on every trip that I go on as a backup. I like to say there's plenty of toilets in the world as there is. You know, I'm usually at some place that I have access to a toilet soon enough. But in an emergency, as we all run into. This little cubby here that I just had open. A Thetford 365 will fit right in there. Shower? You don't have an indoor shower. Yeah, so none Ow. of our vans currently have indoor bathrooms. Ooh, you said currently. Yeah, currently. Which means? They'll, you know, you can come check us out in a couple months. <laughs> uh, I mean, this video will come out maybe before that. In talks of maybe having one in a van. Yeah, well, maybe if you're watching this video right now, you'll go to our website, vancraft.com, and perhaps there'll be some information there about a bathroom van. I don't know. Can we go step outside and we're gonna check out the rear of the yeah. 144, the short wheelbase. Totally. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. All right, so now we're in the, again, your your trunks, your your storage in the back, Nothing has changed yeah. from the 144, it's excuse the me, same. long and short. Yep, the chassis, the Sprinter chassis are largely the same. So, you know, we try and keep things as similar as possible. You know, there's a little bit of difference in length in the storage from the wheel well, but uh -huh. the, the actual length of all the storage space is the same. You're missing something back here that I found out from you guys. Yeah. Uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, the floor system oh, thing. Oh, yeah, the T-mat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll get some B-roll of it, but there's, you know, there's this great product out there that's designed for exactly this use case and some others but it's a plastic sheet that goes down and it has lockable slots in it for you to put i don't know stop anything or anything really yeah. they have all kinds of accessories that go with it but it, it's great for protecting your floor it's great for being able to pull out and wash off stoppers that you can arrange in different places so it keeps your cargo from sliding around now normally in a lot of your vans you guys actually have like yeah ski and sur uh snowboard yeah type. Or, or even surfing i guess so it's like a dowel board and um you know it holds skis, snowboards, fishing poles, anything that's long and uh, you know doesn't weigh over 250 pounds. So this box is designed for that long storage. It's almost seven feet. I like it. So I'm assuming this is all your water and electrical setup. That's right, yeah. So this is outdoor shower setup. You got a water gauge from Cuss, you got a fill, and then you got your overhead lights on and off, and then this is the water pump. And then you got a spray down quick connect port here. And then this is access to a little storage under here so you can keep your like shower hoses and things under here. Does it have a hot water capability? Yeah, it does. And so it, you can select between a couple different options that we have. We run like a portable propane unit, a an electric unit. You can do a unit that is heated from the engine coolant. You know, there's different ways to skin that. Everybody has a different demand basically. And the power consumption for different units is widely different. So we sort of, Spec that out with the customer. What's that little uh, thing in the back back there? Is that just that like... cubby hole is for like the solar controller and uh, fuse box. Sweet. And you can get in there if you want to crawl in and see. I it. mean, I'll have to, I guess, for the for the viewers. So let's step inside the 144, and you guys can see the differences, I guess, between the 144 to the excuse me, the short wheelbase to the long wheelbase. I yeah, let's do it. Uh, is this a drop down that I didn't see before? Yeah. So this is in our short wheelbase. Another difference here. So we're finding differences already. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is offered just in our short wheelbase fan. And the reason is like the, the bench framing and stuff is kind of in here for the bench seating. And so it gets in the way of this is actually this drawstring is paracord uh -huh. and it goes into a pull start from a small engine. And this, the small oh. engine pull start recoils the rope. Oh, yeah. And so we don't have room for all that with the bench. Oh, interesting. Stepping inside. So this is a little bit smaller than the long van, obviously. Yep, a little bit, but it's not, I mean, it's still very campable, livable, however oh, yeah, you want to play it. Yeah, so I, I say that I take long vans as much as I can. This summer I drove to Maine for over a month with my wife and kid and, and baby, and we were in this thing for a month and we're fine. So, you know. Not to get off topic, I'm just curious, how is van life East Coast versus West Coast? Because you were in Salt Lake City, you were in the San Diego area for a very long time. Yeah. You started technically van craft in San Diego. Yeah. So what is, what's your take on the whole van life East Coast versus West Coast. Well, being that I'm from there, I love it. It's right. like being in my own backyard again. You mm -hmm. know, I miss home a lot, so it's nice to travel by van. It's a untapped. I mean, it's like not nearly as popular as, you know, in the West, like, good luck getting a camp spot, you know? Like, go to the National Park website and try and get this camp spot for next weekend. Well, what about the free camping? There's not as much of that unless you know some farmers, yeah. you know? Like, that type of thing. But Harvest Host is a thing. Yeah, and there is great options. There really is. You, there's a lot of websites that have great options. Um, of course, I'm from there. I know people all over the state. It's not a big deal. But, like, I brought my mountain bike. I brought my fishing gear. Like, I hit up all these spots that I hadn't 
hit up before I learned to do all these fun activities that I learned in the West. Yeah. So going back home to the East, there's all these fun things to explore and check out. Upstate New York, Vermont, oh my God. New Hampshire, Maine. We stayed at all these great places along the Great Lakes. I mean, beautiful, like crystal clear water, like you're in the Bahamas. It's an amazing thing to go through the whole East. And if you haven't done a coast to coast road trip in the U.S. before, like you've got to put it on your bucket list. Before I get into what's down here, uh, is this the here option? Yeah, yeah. So that's the auto term. Okay, so is that, is that comes that's a upgrade or standard? Standard, yeah. You got to have a heater and a camper van. I love it. Yeah, I so love we're it. big on winter camping. Like we all, everybody that works here skis. I mean, we're in Utah. You know, it gets cold. These are all thoroughly insulated, standard with uh, a couple of different products. You know, squeaks. So where it squeaks, we use different things. We use different things to get better R value in certain spots that are harder to get to. Um, so they're insulated very well, and then they have a good heater standard. What's not standard is what's actually up there. So that's cooling. So that's your air conditioner. Yeah. So this is a uh, RTX from uh Dometic. Dometic, yeah and so this guy is i mean it's an incredible piece of equipment that's really changed the game on getting air conditioning off-grid we're an off-grid focused company we, we focus clearly on not being dependent on shore power for any of the systems that we install in the van so air conditioning that you have to plug into a wall is no good like you know there's no sense in installing that in our vans because i'm never going to use it you know i have a modest sized energy lithium bank in here it's 400 amp hours and as far as like van builders go and building goes these days 400 amp hours of lithium is like it's the small bank right it is small technically right. but I mean, it's especially enough. for the stuff that you you are showing on your panel <laughs> i mean there's some nuts of stuff out there right there are air conditioner will run for days uh-huh and i don't have to start the van i don't have to worry about solar you uh -huh. do have a dc to dc i though believe i totally yeah yeah yeah, yeah. got to i mean with a 400 amp hour battery bank you can have all the panel in the world up here it's a lot of battery to charge. Yep. You got to charge with something else besides solar unless you have just a lot of time on your hands. This is not the only option out there. What I mean to say is that like this unit and other units, just like battery technology and everything else is allowing us yeah. to do all kinds of awesome stuff that we couldn't do before. I did say I was going to get to this. So your sink moved from here to here yeah. from the longs of the short, Yeah. but it's still very easy yeah. and still, versatile. You know, functional sink. You can do a lot with this. You know, what I say in both vans is like, you're not going to do dishes from a Thanksgiving meal in here. You know, the outdoor shower has hot water and you can spray down all your dishes out there. And then we put a soap pump in here because, you know, anything you can do to prevent like having to stow a bottle of something somewhere is super handy. So you have the water tank that's in the back, but that's yeah. designated for your shower predominantly. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you say you have indoor tanks for your sinks. Yeah, and you can do it either way with us, you know, but most of the spec builds that we do, we do a, a tank inside. If you want a single pump and a single water source, we do that. You can have this run off the main tank in the back if you don't want to have separate tanks. I mean, honestly, for van life, I love that. Like you said, filling up at like a glacier station is yeah. perfect for something like this. Yeah, you just take this in the store, fill it with drinking water, then you've got really good drinkable water out of the top. There's no need to be like managing filters and that sort of thing for having on board. It's just another step that you don't want to have to have it's handle. It's simple, yeah. It, what is your company all about? Simplicity. Simplicity. Bandcraft <laughs> simplicity. Yeah. <laughs> this is a four-wheel drive chassis. It's got air conditioning. It's got lithium batteries. It's got leather seats for Mercedes. Um, it's got, this has cloth uh, cushions, actually, not leather. These are a Sunbrella canvas. This, so this, is all, this doesn't have the L either. No, no L, yeah. So this, this flips up. It's all the same dimension, right? But this L is gone. Got so it. You lose that extra seating. Well, you told us the price on the long wheelbase. I guess a mid-level VanCraft build. Yeah, yeah. Not as equipped Mercedes parts on the Sprinter. Yeah. This one seems to be a much higher end Mercedes because it's a four by four. Yeah. It's got the leather. Yeah. It's got some bells and whistles on it. Yeah. And this is what what is this more this higher end? This van is like as expensive as it gets with us in a short wheelbase van. This is so this is almost top tier. Yeah, and a lot of that is in the chassis. So this has you know the leather wrapped steering wheel. It has leather heated seats. It has you know a rare not a common color that you see every day at Mercedes. And then the build has. I would say close to top tier stuff that you can shop with us to get. A lot know. of it is air conditioner yeah. or the 400 amp hours of lithium. Yeah, there's a couple kind of like stuff. smaller add-ons I don't see in here. Like we offer a, our insulated partition, mm. a bug screen on the door, that type of thing, some soft goods. So what's the cost of something like this? This guy is going to hover right below 160. Okay. So $160,000. That and, includes the van, obviously. And the difference in price, was that 20? That was 125. 125, okay. So there, it's a significant bump, but not that much. Yeah. But again, like a lot of that's in the chassis, man. Like if you go to buy the four-wheel drive from Mercedes, the bump just there alone is considerable. Right. So the the one sixty, that I can't, I I cannot believe this. That's van included. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like a sale special pricing. That's just what you know. Right. Because a four x four Sprinter off the lot again can be upwards of seventy. Yeah. 
Easy. Oh, 80. Well, nowadays, yes. You get into a, like a passenger van, dually, extra. I mean, you're looking at close to six figures for yeah. just the van, right? Just the van. So, yeah, I mean, it can get nuts pretty quick. This one, you don't have the lagoon mount in there, but again, the table can go. So it's got the plate. You know, if you, you, you know, I think this one's, actually, this one's going to be in the drawer. So this drawer will have it stowed in here. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, yeah, it's the same size as the table top. So that's not the bottom of the drawer. It's the, the table. Where's the, uh, where's the toilet in this one? So the toilet... Oh, look at that. So this cubby there is exactly the specs for a Thetford 365 to fit in there. So for people that saw him do that amount of work, it didn't take you long at all. But for people that are like, that was a lot of work to get to your toilet. I really got to go. Like, what do I do? <laughs> when I can tell you this right now, as somebody that was a van lifer, trust me, there's, like you said earlier, there are toilets everywhere. There are toilets everywhere, but also like this is just for you to go down the road and not be worried about it, your toilet sloshing everywhere, right? Like what I do, if I'm going to bed at night and I think if I wake up in the middle of the night, it's 20 degrees out tonight. I don't want to go outside and pee. I'll pull the toilet out. I'll put it right where you're standing in between the seats. Yeah. And that way the toilet's there ready for me to go. I don't, you know, I'm not under here fiddling around. You're just a little That's bit. That's a good point. I never even thought of it that way. I'd like take yeah. the toilet out before you do stuff. Nate, I appreciate you uh, showing us yeah, for both sure. vans. Yeah. I uh, appreciate you kind of talk a little about your company. I don't ever talk about price with pros, so thank you very much for sharing pricing. Yeah, it's pretty open. If you want one of your vans, yep. you can contact you at... Yeah, we're at vancraft.com. Van, is it hyphen craft? Yeah, van-craft.com. Van underscore craft on Instagram. Oh, is that underscore? Okay. It's an underscore there. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're on Facebook, Instagram. You're on all the good stuff. Pinterest. We, ha we have three locations too. So we're here in Salt Lake City. Yep. We're in Denver. And we're in San Diego. Salt Lake is where you do, is your, your headquarters. That's where we build the vans. That's where you build your vans. But if you buy the van from us, it can be serviced at any of the three. And then if you rent a van from us, we rent from those three locations. Any words of wisdom that you want to give? So if you're looking to buy a van, like do a lot of research. Go yeah. rent a bunch off Outdoorsy. Rent from Vancraft. Rent a, a bunch of different chassis. Try what you like. Figure out what you don't. It's nice to be able to sleep in one at a Walmart parking lot before you buy, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean. Take it on a camping trip. Try a bunch of different stuff. I mean, it's a big investment. And so do your research and uh, watch a lot of these YouTube videos on Ghost Fans channel. I usually try to, thank you. Yeah. I usually try to tell people to watch more than one person. Yeah. So watch mine among some others. Yep. I'm not trying to take all the cake. <laughs> yeah. I just want a piece of the pie. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for showing us everything, buddy. All right. Thanks, man. Later. See ya.